Hello and welcome to the second audio uh, podcast ever of the Bunker to Bunker podcast. We are having a host of technical difficulties this fine morning. So it's a uh, miracle this episode is even happening. But uh, nonetheless, we're here recording, talking about the world of golf. Uh, I know Joss has had a pretty rough start to his morning, so let the people know how that's going for you. Yeah, got up at like 5 a.m. Eastern time without just, I wake up in the middle of the night randomly. Have some sleeping problems, that's not really the issue here, but um, yeah, my personal phone is just not turning on. So I'm lucky that I figured this out at 5 a.m. that I didn't go back to bed and then sleep through this or didn't get up in time to log on for work and stuff. So, uh, but I was really, th- you know, trying to think like, I don't know, there's obviously worse feelings that are more tragic or death and other things, but I think this is probably one of like the worst feelings that you could have, especially that I've been up for the last two and a half hours and now have to wait till 10 a.m. or even longer to figure out what's up with my phone. It's just a very tedious task to figure out but um hopefully i can get through it but yeah bad feeling yeah i could could dream up some better starts to your wednesday but yeah it looks like you have a fun fun day ahead of you um yeah i guess i guess we can just hop right in um just kind of talk about yeah go go for it let's start let's hear it um, I saw a lot of social media posts about your birthday. Um, I'm sure you had a lot of fun because of all the posts of people and friends that you had. You probably had like 50 people at some a house or apartment. I have not heard about this extravaganza. So I think that yeah. I, would, I would love to know what took place. Who are these friends of yours? Um, Glad you're making friends out in Spain, jokingly, but you no, know, it, it looked like a good time, but um, it seemed like a fun party that I wish I was at. Yeah, you know, I have three awesome roommates. Shout out Jake, who is definitely not listening to me, but yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, and it's really funny because every time people talk about Friday, they're like, oh, it's like 50 people, 50 people. And I'm like, that's pretty accurate. Um, which is kind of wild because everyone always says 50. Um, but yeah, I had a little party at our apartment before. Um, kind of shocked that we could fit that many people into this place. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, then went out to the club after that, out until about 6, uh, 5 in the morning, actually. Um, so long day, but nonetheless, it was absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, it was great. I feel old now, so don't. Don't enjoy getting older. It doesn't feel great, but, you know, life. <laughs> You're 25? 25, that's an insult. I'm 24. Don't No, don't say 25. So got, then that gets into the conversation of, like, uh, your, your middle 20s. Then you really got to feel old. Like, I'm, oh. you know. I don't know. I mean, I feel like people over state 25. I feel like now I I feel like once people have like kids and start I feel like once I get invited to like my first wedding of like a really close friend of mine, that will make me feel old. I feel like it's twenty five. Yeah, it's, it, it's age is just a number. It's easy to say, but I, it, like, I don't know. I feel like once you get old is when like your life completely changes, and I feel like that's only when you have a yeah, kid. That's my yeah. I um I have my first wedding. On uh, on August tenth this year, shout out Will Bablack, um, and Katie. That will be awesome out right outside of Pittsburgh. So we really just got to stop talking about this because now I'm just gonna be like, oh, I gotta worry about like taxes, my future. Like not so it's just not. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, okay. um, you know, it's just like not not ideal, not ideal. But yeah. oh well, that's good uh, to hear. 
Um, but let's get into um, let's get into the news that's been taking over the golf world. Nick Dunlap, twenty year old amateur sophomore at Alabama, uh, won the American Express. It was pretty thrilling. I know that I'm not sure how much of the coverage you kind of saw live or even on um, Twitter, but what's kind of like your reaction to the headline that an amateur who's 20, you know, beat Sam Burns and JT basically in the final group um, to win a PJ Tour event? Yeah, so one of the unfortunate things about living in Europe is the six hour time difference where I am just so disconnected from the golf world, um, especially when it's on the West Coast. On the East Coast, we haven't, I haven't really seen much of that um, given, you know, the wraparound season. And I've moved over here in October, given like the wraparound seasons, you know, usually on the West Coast or, or in Hawaii, and I, I can't even watch that. Um, but I'm nine hours ahead of the West Coast. So it's, it's a little bit difficult to really watch any golf because um, you think about, you know, 3, 4 p.m. West Coast time is right about when it finishes. And that is, you know, 1, 2 in the morning for me. So it's fairly difficult. Um, but hopefully um, when it moves back to the East Coast, it'll be a little bit more uh, easier to do. So a little bit disconnected. But regardless, that is probably the biggest story and probably the biggest storyline of the calendar year. Don't know if you can find a bigger story. Uh, that could materialize, just given the historical value of it being the first uh, amateur since 1991, um, which the PGA Tour is still has still not said was Phil Mickelson, because I think that's hilariously petty that they're just like, we're going to post all these graphics about first amateur since 91, first guy since 91. Well, great. Tell us who was in 91, Phil Mickelson. Uh, second youngest amateur to ever do it behind Jordan Spieth, who was 19. Um, and there's one stat about something in uh, World War II. I don't know what it was. Something about World War II. Um, so, something since World War II or World War One. Yeah, I, I don't I know. Forget. They kept pounding those stats out that I yeah. should have taken that one. In. Yeah, but he... Uh, Nick Dunlap made the biggest jump in the official golf world rankings system. I believe he was in the 4,000s, and he jumped all the way up to 68, which I don't want to say proves the flaws of the world ranking system because then all the live bots and all the live fans will be like, ha, we got him to think the OWGR stinks. But that's not reality, as as dumb as that sounds. You know, you, you don't really... You can't, it's, it's, it's more of like, I wish there was a way to rank players based on, not like experience, but like perennial contenders or something like that. Not if you go out there and win three tournaments, then all of a sudden, you know, you're technically the 68th best player in the world. Yeah. Technically he is, but in reality, he's not, right? He's still probably in the thousands and all, and all just being brutally realistic, not taking anything away from him, but just kind of shows the flaw of the system, but there's no real way to do it other than how they do it. So right back at you, live guys. There's no other system that works. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess the people use data golf rankings as their like um, OWGR basically, but that's just stats, but you can't have, you don't have stats on a Nick Dunlap if he plays a couple of times a year if that um but yeah no it is crazy to think that an amateur won a tour event but when i was just kind of debriefing about this and kind of being like like, what do i want to say today about this like i honestly like i'm honestly not that surprised i'm actually surprised that it's been since 1991 but I feel like the real stats mm. probably like Spieth winning at 19 at the John Deere when he needed to make a birdie on 18 and then um, chipped it in for the bunker and then won in a playoff in five holes, I believe. But it's like you see that these kids now grow up on the AJGA or what's it called again? Is that it? A 
Yeah, AJGA, American yeah. Junior Golf Association. AJGA, so, it's such a yeah. tongue twister to say. Yeah, I know it is. But, you know, these kids grow up on these, you know, junior tours, if you want to call it. They play in state versus the best of the best. They now train like professional athletes when they're, you know, 13, 14. They probably start when they, once they hit like puberty. And then, mm. you know, they like they're playing high level golf and probably nice golf courses. So I honestly think this like I wouldn't be surprised the next five years we see someone else who's around twenty years old like win. Like we had I know Akshay won um last year and he was I think he's twenty one or twenty. So talk about us being old. Um having these kids <laughs> win probably makes us feel a little bit old, but I just feel like this could be a maybe not a trend but you know i i can see these players you know coming up on a sponsor invite and post like a top 10 top five obviously it's hard to win and he had to get up and down on 18 and make putts to win so like you know he proved that he can do it but i'm looking back and i'm like this like these like these kids aren't going away and that and that was kind of the one of the takeaways i had yeah, and it, it it's one of those things where you also got to think about how difficult, like how amazing that performance was that that Dunlap had. Oh, where you know you're talking about an amateur who's who's still in high school, not high school, gosh, who's still in college, whose pre um, pre tournament odds were three fifty to one, I believe was the number. Yeah. And it, it, that just shows the magnitude of how I mean, it's ridiculously hard to just win a golf tournament even as the best player in the world because you know you're beating a hundred and 55 would you know dependent on the event players it, it, it's just so crazy to think about you know how insane of an accomplishment that is but at the same time you you do think how has this not happened before right because it's the same thing as like monday qualifiers it just takes one day right obviously a golf term is four days but if you just put yourself in positions and especially where you know i i no, I, I don't think we'll ever see a case where like a an amateur will win a, uh, they have before, but an amateur will win a grand slam, not a grand slam. Gosh, I'm thinking tennis, a major, um, just because given the sheer difficulty, unless it turns into a shootout, like a PGA championship, but with like these birdie fest courses, you know, you, I don't want to say you see this every year, but you could see like an, a, a regular occurrence of amateurs just being in the mix because it's a similar course setup to what they're playing in college. We're going out there. You need to shoot eight, nine under. To win your collegiate tournament, you go out there and put eight, nine under together through four straight days, and boom, you just won a golf tournament. So, wouldn't wouldn't be surprised to see it more regular in the future at all. Um, yeah, because I mean, as as I as I've always said, I don't understand what these freshmen are eating. You know, you keep on seeing these absolute just insane athletes turning up at like fourteen, fifteen years old, and you're like. Well, when I was 14, I was learning how to do this. <laughs> like the, the most childish thing ever. So I don't know what, yeah. what they feed these people, but um, it wouldn't shock me if it happened more regularly. Yeah, there's just more... There's just more science out there, obviously, with it that, you know, it's... Um, yeah, it's not that he closed this out. I think that um, there's, I forget who, I was listening on Smiley's podcast and he said that his, so Dunlap's caddy was this, I don't I don't know what kind of his tag is, but basically has known Nick his entire life. I'm not sure if he's like his coach or he might be a mental coach. I'm not sure. I forget what he said, but basically this guy was like a mentor to Dunlap his entire, you know, once he started at a young age shooting 59 when he was like 12 years old. Um, so I think that mentally, like he showed that how like mentally strong he is. I follow Brett McCabe who um, has been trying to fix Frankie Borelli on foreplay. And I think he's with yeah. Horschel and Rom, and I'm sure he's with other people or other players on tour, but you know, you have this outlet now of sports therapy or, you know, and stuff that 
um, again, like these kids are being, you know, with these mental coaches at a young age too, which kind of, I think has to, to do with their success too, with the pressure, like the kid didn't look phased. Like, you know, he made on hole eight, he made a double bogey. He was up two to, or he was up three to Burns going in the hole eight, hits, you know, takes double and then Burns makes a birdie and they're tied. And it seemed like it didn't really, you know, stress them out at all. So I think just the mental coaches, I know that Spieth on Mark Immelman's podcast yesterday said that he does some sort of therapy. I'm not sure if you saw like the Kirk Cousins quarterback thing, like the documentary Mm -hmm. Netflix, but they had that like uh, contraption or something that like Kirk does for his mental state. Um, I forget what it's called. Spieth uses it. He used it in 2021 and then posted like a T6 or something like the week later or something like that, like something crazy. Um, So I think this is kind of just the trend that players are going in. And, you know, I guess the final question before we move on to a different topic is um, when does he turn pro? So one more thought before, before I hop into that, we're going to see the age of like, 28 29 is being old in the world of sports i mean i know you're not big into tennis but a big thing for tennis players is like a lot it's it's mainly more not i wouldn't say more so but there's a lot of 16 year olds on the women's tour that are professional right and out here you know playing professionally playing in professional tournaments and all that and we're seeing like the tennis game gravitate towards like 24 years old is being like in your prime and then like 30 years old you're like damn you're gigantic not you're gigantic you're ancient so i i wonder if we're starting to see golf kind of transition towards like 17 18 year olds could could be regulars but hasn't tennis who knows tennis has always been that way just because um it's not as i don't want to say there's not as much skill because that's all i'm trying to say but Golf is more of a mastery comparative to tennis in terms of mastery of the sport. So that's why I don't think, but especially with the new technology, I could see golf gravitating towards more of a younger crowd peaking earlier. Well, that's what, I mean, um, that's what golf is now. I mean, they're you yeah. know, rolling back the ball in 2028, which is another chat. But, you know, you have like a Gordon Sargent who hits it like 330. Um, yeah. I don't know how far this Dunlop kid hits it. There's a kid from Stanford, Michael Thorpson or Thorbjornson, yeah. Yeah, Thorbjornson, who he put Garrett Clark in the match, and then I watched it. I'm like, this kid's a stick. Like, just yeah. Like, the, I think like the kid just made like I, I don't know what he shot. He probably shot like four or five under. Speaking of that, speaking of that, I haven't I haven't heard anyone say say the word stick in golf since. I know you don't know tennis enough, but when I was working at the U.S. Open up in New York, um, I got to chat with Jack Sock, who was retiring. He's perennial, like, very good doubles player, won a Grand Slam a couple of times, great singles player, one of the best forehands you'll ever see. And I was just chatting with him. He's a big golf guy. And I was, like, hanging out in the player's locker room, walking back with him because my job was to escort the players back from the courts uh, before their matches and after. And I was like, oh, you know, congrats on the retirement. Like, he's like 31 years old. I'm like, congrats yeah. on the retirement, you know, go enjoy golf and all this. And he's like, do you play? I'm like, yeah. He's like, what's your handicap? And I like stutter for a second. He goes, I bet you're a stick, aren't you, man? And I was just like, I just looked at him like, that's the best compliment you could say. <laughs> like, being, being told by a professional athlete that you're a stick in golf was like a truly like, all right, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, I never got to blurt out what my handicap was because I think you might have taken away the the stick comment if I said a two point eight, but I just kind of just took that like okay, that's pretty cool. Well, the thing so, or two point eight is just that's, that's not just, really a stick though. A stick is no. like a plus handicap more so. So I didn't want to take away from that. No, but pretty I'm just cool saying, moment. saying that you're a two point eight as a handicap is just like not to be me. It's just like a cocky thing to say. Like just to Correct. say you're a two or like a three, like oh yeah, I'm like a no, two no, no. You have to you have to include the point. You have to include the point. You gotta make pe- you gotta make people think you're serious. You have to. 
Do you go upper? Well, so are you a three if you play a match? Yeah. Okay, I so would be. Yeah. I don't know. I but if per so, like exact number, it's a point eight, two point eight. Yeah, I mean, if I if I if, um if, back to your, back to back to your question. Sorry, uh, about Nick Dunlop. When does he turn pro? Um, I don't think he'll turn pro until right before the Masters, uh, or right before the players, excuse me. Um, I think he will just kind of sit it out for a little bit. I mean, he's 20 years old, but I think that he will turn pro right before the Masters. Or, gosh, the players. The players in March is when he'll turn pro. Yeah, I mean, the only, like, it is a hard decision. I mean, when you're at, I'm sure his scenario right now at Alabama is that he probably is in a he probably lives in a house or lives in an apartment with his teammates and you have the team golf aspect of it probably has a girlfriend on campus too and close friends and and I know he's from Birmingham so close to family at least um so I mean yeah he I think he has until 2026 to like Say that he's turning perfect, or he has twenty twenty six until his exemption runs out. But he's in the Masters already in like the U.S. Open. I think the only thing he isn't in is the is the Open because he won the U.S.M. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I guess the only thing is that do you want to start making money and get in these tournaments and start just feeling and you know getting a routine on tour? Obviously, it doesn't guarantee you money, but I think some of these events are no cut events. So I think like, so. Like he is going to be guaranteed money then at that point. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I think I think we'll see. I think he's never going to wait it out. Um, there's really no rush, you know. In, in, unless like, I mean, he's already in like the Masters, I believe. So um, that's that. But I know we're on a little bit of time crunch now, so we'll let's skip the Daniel Berger talk for next episode, but. No, 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 no. We have to spend two minutes on Daniel Berger. We have to. We have to. For the uh, pure I reason mean, of, I, I would the, like, I, well, well, well I meant oh, the, the story. story. The story can be for the next episode. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. But I would, I would, I would like an apology, please. Um, we made a bet that Daniel Berger uh, would make the cut. I said he would. You said he wouldn't. And what, what did he do, Josh? Uh, I think he made the cut. He did make the cut. So I would like uh, an apology. I mean, I'll apologize to Daniel Berger, um, first and foremost. Not to me, his biggest fan. He posted a top 42. Top 42? I mean, I mean, in, in, he, all, in all joking aside, he actually looked a lot better than I thought. I thought he would be like a Zal Torres. Um, uh-huh. And kind of just like look lost, but he looked confident. Um, it's still like I know you're a big fan, obviously. Is there any rumblings on, on like what happened? I feel like nothing has come out. Back, I back injury. It. That's what. Back that's injury. what. I assume. If you're out for eighteen months, it's basically a back, always for golf. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, no, he no, he looked, he looked really good. I mean, he. I said he would miss a cut because. Not because of himself. I'm a Daniel Berger fan. I own some of his gear, um, which I feel like a hardcore fan would own a shoe of Daniel Berger. But um, well, you I know, pretty I, good. I have I Daniel Berger's autograph on a personal Pebble Beach flag. I'll cut it at that. Sound good? From, from where? The 20, uh, 2019? 2019. Well, you have the shoe. I need the second shoe if I can get it somehow. Uh to, to you, got, uh, you gotta you gotta see him. You gotta see him. I don't need it. Uh yeah. I might be going to a golf tournament soon, but I'm not sure if he'll be there. Which one? Um I'll say later, but um I don't know if Why? He'll be. um I think I'm going to the Masters actually. What? Yeah. How? Who? What? Where? Why? Well, I don't know. I mean, why would I? Did you win the lottery and you didn't tell me? 
No, I'm not saying. I have some connections. You what? Oh my gosh. Well, what? you're buying me merchandise, and we're calling it at that. Fair? What? You you buy me merchandise, and I'll pay you, and we'll call it fair. Sound good? Fair on fair on what? Oh my gosh. You'll be there in person. Buy me some merchandise. I'll pay you back. I'll give you some interest. And we'll make we'll make it fair. Are you actually you actually think I'm going to the fucking masters? There's Yeah. Obviously, obviously I'm not going. I don't know how you I don't know how you fell for that. No, I might be going to uh the That's so terrible because I just played along with it. <laughs> like... No, you hundred percent. You hundred percent. Thought I was. I'm going to. Oh, so, oh, 100% fell for it. Where are you going? What tournament? Um, maybe the Arnold Palmer. Ooh, that's a fun one. API but, down at Bay Hill, Orlando area. Yeah, I have some time off and stuff. I don't, I'm not sure. It's like Penn State spring break too. Uh, so my brother Ooh. is doing it for spring break, but um, we're gonna figure that out later. But I'm like, I'm not sure because it's a signature event. I'm not. I'm not sure if he sponsor exemption or something for him. I'm not really sure, but that'd be cool. Maybe he'll get a medical. Maybe he'll get a medical exemption. I think McNeely is getting that for Pebble. Um, but yeah, not. I would say that I lost. I obviously lost the bet. Um, but I wouldn't say I was like rooting against Berger um, because I think it's he's just he's so talented and it's um, so I, talented. Yeah, I mean, the way that he just strikes the uh, ball with his irons is just majestic. Um, so, but, yeah, that's enough. Bear talk, we'll hear a lot more of him and update uh, on that. He's playing at the Farmers this week, so hopefully he can miss the cut. Uh, let's do some fun questions before we wrap up. I know we have a couple minutes left, but uh, we have the Farmers this week at Torrey Pines. One of the historic courses we have on tour. Kind of the question I kind of wrote down in the outline was, you know, what course, historic course, would you want to play, public or private? There's some obvious answers, but do you have one that's not one that you think of initially that you would want to play that you have? Free reign, so it can be public or private? Yeah, public or private course that you haven't played and you would want to play one round at uh but maybe not one that is popular if that makes sense like obviously you're well i don't i don't yeah i don't i don't know if there there there'd be there's three courses that i would say and they're all in the pennsylvania pennsylvania state the state of pennsylvania well one's in new jersey Um, they're all popular, but they're all not common answers. Pine Valley, Oakmont, and Marion. And Oakmont and Marion are the potentially achievable for me this summer. Pine Valley will never happen, but I think it'd probably be those. Um, you know, the standard answer, Augusta or, or Pebble, obviously those would be ideal or something like that, but Shadow Creek or old course at St. Andrews, like all, like those would be great, but that's, that's a boring answer. Yeah. What's, I mean, if I had to, so if you had a rank most likely for you to play, you said Pine Valley is last, but between Oakmont and Marion, what's more likely? Marion. Um, I know the president of Marion, but I just haven't, found the courage to ask him to invite me as a guest but his presidency expires at the end of this year so i will need i will find the courage <laughs> I, that's just like it's just such an awkward conversation like i haven't it's one of my friend's dads like i haven't talked to him in probably five or seven years so you and know i'm just gonna him. randomly reach out so you know of him well, he knows me. We just haven't like I used to hang out with his kid all the time. Yes. Um, I, it, it's it's just even, like a weird. Did you even become a president of a 
Like, does he have like a golfing? You no, know, why don't why don't I I'd I'd, lo- I'd love to talk to him about it. Yeah, I would say that my ranking, Oakmont's definitely last for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's dude, honestly, Pine Valley and Marion are very close. I'm not trying to. Th- I'm not trying to flex or anything, but there's, I would probably say Marion because I probably, I know of a dozen or so members, a college friend's friend works there. So that path at some point in the next like 50 years is probably more feasible. Pine Valley, my dad has played twice. Jeez. Uh, and we have, I have some family that um, used to work on the grounds and one of them's a board member, I think. But we don't, we don't really uh, talk. But like my grandmother doesn't. It's like my grandmother's cousin, but she, they don't. I, th- I actually think she listens to this, or I know she does listen. But hopefully she doesn't get to this point. But um, yeah, no, she like we don't keep in that much contact with. I think that that side. Yeah. Um, we only we probably, but so that the there is a path. My dad has played it twice on a Monday, um, and stuff. So, and I don't know anyone at Oakmont. Um, unless at the U.S. Open they let me play, you know, after. Yeah, when we, when, when we get our media credential. Yeah, boots on the ground. Uh, but I guess to close it out, I know we have a minute left. Who wins the NFC and AFC championship game? Oh, let's see, let's see. Um... I think the Chiefs Ravens is going to be very interesting given how I still don't think the Ravens are that good. Again, that is an extremely biased opinion um, because the Steelers swept them this year. The Steelers kind of beat the Ravens every year. So I don't really think they're that good. So I, I do think the Chiefs Ravens. win. And I, I, yeah, I don't think they're good. It's a, it's a very hot take. I don't think they're good. Um, I think the 49ers win by a field goal. I think the Lions cover the seven and a half point spread because um, that offense can be very explosive. I just think that the 49ers are too good. But I think a very underrated thing is the Lions signing Zach Ertz. So you're going to have Sam Laporta and Zach Ertz potentially in two tight end sets. And you're like, that's going to be fun to guard. So I think it's going to be a lot closer than – people think yeah i mean i i'm not gonna bet on either game the the spread i mean i think i think the niners winning obviously i think nfl wants the niners to win and then chiefs obviously they have taylor swift and the ravens you can you know <laughs> obviously they have taylor swift <laughs> um, i think i think ravens i think that um i think the ravens are actually really good um they have the best defense huh. They just play with a they, they, they just play with so much more. They're way more physical than every team. I, I, I actually do think they're gonna give Mahomes and that offense havoc. I don't think they. I, don't, I feel like they're gonna make Mahomes or like they're you're gonna say that the, the talent on offense around Mahomes is limited. I think Kelsey is not yeah. really well, and I think that they have the linebackers and everyone Cal Hamilton to guard Kelsey and hopefully break. Taylor Swift's heart. Um, so, but yeah, that's so. All yeah. right. Well, yeah. Um, thank you, everyone out there for listening um, on the twenty sixth episode. Crazy how we're at twenty six now because um, it feels like just yesterday we started. Um, but yeah, looking forward to weekly content every week. Uh, we'll keep on pumping out these episodes. And yeah, thanks for listening.